It's another day with the physicians where your health is our business. So we are not going to take some drastic measures. But a 10 year old for me. But also to know that it's not only when your pressure is high that you have your COVID. Sugar, and I don't know about any other one, but what do you know on the You're welcome back to the Jenny Hotel on the Red It's important to know that cancers, when caught early, are very, very amenable to treatment. But because our people present late, now when they present, how do we detect that this is cancer? It starts with the routine medical training of history taking. Menopausal bleeding is bleeding that occurs after menopause. Menopause is a stage in a woman's life, around age 51, when reproductive hormones drop and her monthly menstrual periods stop. Vaginal bleeding that occurs more than a year after a woman's last period isn't normal. The bleeding can be light, we really call it spotting, or it actually can be heavy. Postmenopausal bleeding is usually due to a benign or non-cancerous gynecological condition such as endometrial polyps. But for about 10% of women, bleeding after menopause is a sign of uterine cancer, that is endometrial cancer. Uterine cancer is the most common type of reproductive cancer, more common than ovarian or cervical cancers. On your regular program, The Physicians, where your health is our business, today we'll be discussing postmenopausal bleeding, the causes, presentations, diagnosis, complications, and of course, management. Stay tuned, we'll be back after the short break. It's another day with The Physicians, where your health is our business. Today we'll be discussing postmenopausal bleeding. It usually affects the women, of course, it's postmenopausal. My name is Dr. Martina Agbere, your regular host on this program. And of course, I'm not alone. I'm with my regular co-host, Dr. And Memuna Yusuf Kadri. It's always a pleasure to be on set. We're discussing postmenopausal uh, bleeding. And uh, from the introduction, you say it, it's, it's actually more apart from the women, um, it affects the uterus and it can become cancerous yeah. after a while. Have you ever had uh, a patient that, uh, that came down with uh, this bleeding? You know, postmenopausal, post post the woman is after menopause yeah. and begins to bleed. Yeah. Menopause is normal, but it's when natural, you bleed, it's natural. It's so, but when you not bleed after, then there that should is be a problem. problem. And of course, no. Now making sure to find out if it's not something that is life threatening, if it's not something that you know um, that was a bit not looked into earlier that could escalate into more complications. Um, having women with postmenopausal bleeding, I'm thinking back like years ago as a house officer. Mm -hmm. I'm not an obstetric and gynecologist, so. It's easy to just reflect back those early days of, you know, just being a physician and remembering cases that, you know, because of just a symptom of, I don't know why I'm bleeding mm -hmm. again, and then with the investigations, as, as I remember a particular lady, it was already cancer, cancerous, mm -hmm. and it was already in the, you know, terminal stage. It was really, really sad because I could, 
imagine if there was regular screening yeah. or regular yeah. visitation and maybe the preventive health culture, maybe that could have been Maybe, he, maybe health education would have actually Yeah, done. The awareness case, the case, and the all case that. that I saw, the lady actually came, her own complaint was a, a pain during coitus. Okay, and uh, she said each time she had the uh, had a coital uh, a coitus, she usually would uh, have pain, and after she, she has bleeding. bleeding, and so she just thought it was because uh, maybe because she was getting older. That was why she maybe, was experiencing dryness, dryness, which are usually some of the signs of menopause. Things, menopause. So she took it for granted. But when the bleeding became uh, uh, more, she had to come to the hospital. Mm. Unfortunately, by the time we investigated her, they did necessary things. We found that she was actually uh, advanced with weight loss and everything. So I think that's the essence of physicians, um, you know, creating that awareness, um, you know, breaking, you know, this misconception with regards to fake news and bringing real life information, shared experiences mm -hmm. from people and educating the general public on things that they may never have noticed or or things they noticed but took for granted or and things that are you know common out there but they don't think it is something that matters to them mm -hmm. because even if you are not a woman you are born of a woman yeah. you have a woman friend you have a sister you have a wife no yes. so it's 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 for everybody to understand It's actually for everybody to know. It's not only the woman that should actually benefit from yeah, this program, everybody. from the this particular family. topic. The whole family, even friends, colleagues, exactly. parents, you actually benefit yeah. from it also. Postmenopausal bleeding is something that we need to actually take very good care of and uh, listen more. That is why we're here for you on The Physicians. We have a guest that is going to come and handle this. Don't go we'll be back after the short break. Stay tuned. If you have just joined us here on your regular program, the physicians where your health is our business. Today we'll be discussing postmenopausal bleeding. And as usual, in the studio with me, we have our guest. He is a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist. No other one than our regular professor, Sir Anthony Akinloe Baniboye. He is the CEO, MD CEO. Miss Med Hospital here in Lekki, Lagos. Prof, you're welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Producer, look, Doctor. You're, you're looking really nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so we're talking we're going to be talking about postmenopausal bleeding. Maybe you should just give us a general overview first so that people can understand. You want to just tell us something about the uterus before you now delve into the real program, the, pro, the, the, the challenge. What is postmenopausal bleeding? Where is it supposed to be originated from? Maybe give us an overview of how the uterus is first. Thank you very much. Uh, Postmenopausal bleeding is a condition that occurs in women who have reached menopause. For the first time we should ever think of this, any woman or anybody who uh, has passed that age of 45 to 51 and start bleeding a year after she has stopped, we termed uh, postmenopausal bleeding. However, any condition that would cause that woman to bleed anywhere in the genital tract, from the vagina to the uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and of course the ovary um, can result into that. We do have, of course, uh, women who do, do, do not know anything about it. They don't know anything about it, but the condition is there. The spouse 
the um, people at home should, as a matter of education, know about that. Because it's a global health challenge, and global health challenge will uh, involve everybody. And uh, of course, when we have postmenopausal bleeding, it is, it is nothing to be scared of, but it's something to, to take seriously. Uh, one in 10 women who bleed postmenopausally post -menopausally would end up with cancer of the genital tract. So it is Im important to take it serious. If one would have a cancer in life, God forbid, one of the best cancers to have is actually cancer of the inside of the womb, the endometrium, which is one of the commonest cancers that can cause postmenopausal bleed. Postmenopausal bleeding will come from the sources of the vagina itself, where there's infection in the, in the vagina. It can come from the service where there's infection in the, in the service. Infection in the lining of the womb, the endometrium called endometritis. It can also come from growth in the vagina called vagina polyps. Polyps is like a, a finger. It's a finger kind of a stuff which grows in the, in the vagina. It's quite small. It's not as big as a, fin a finger. It's like 1 cm growth or more or even less at times. We can also have other causes. Yes, but we just said one in ten women yeah. that have postmenopausal bleeding can uh, become a cancerous. Yes. Okay? And you made mention of polyp as some, one of the causes that yeah. you talked about. Is it as a result of hormonal changes that the women can come down with uh, postmenopausal bleeding? Because you have had your period regularly for a, 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 a quite some time, and uh, when you attain menopause, it's believed that you should also go through the stages of menopause without a challenge. So at what point will you now decide that, uh, okay, this person has a postmenopausal bleeding? What could be responsible? Well, I was trying to li list out the causes of postmenopausal bleeding. But as a matter of fact, if a woman bleeds for any reason at all, be it infection or be it growth, it needs to be investigated. And as I said, one in 10 women, 10% 10 of the women who bleed would end up with the cancer if nothing is done. Mm. So now it, it seems more like you said it's something we shouldn't be worried about, but if not checked, it can be disastrous. Yeah. So it sounds as if it is it is sweet and bitter at the same time, you know, like that kind of ozymoric kind of statement. But now that we know there are, there are causes and the different type which you have mentioned now. How would someone know, aside from the bleeding that you will see, that the woman will complain of, what are the other signs and symptoms? Absolutely. Okay, um, you see, we, we shouldn't forget the, the topic that we, we are on. In. Our topic is post menopausal bleeding. bleeding. So maybe we can talk of the risk factors okay. that will make a woman say, oh, I'm at a high I'm risk. At, I'm at high risk, yes, yes okay. A woman who is obese, that's number one. Oh, wow. A, an obese woman will have... Uh, it's at higher risk higher of having... Owner, higher risk of having... Just uh, because this, of the, being obese? Yes. Because when you are, you are obese, the, the hormones which are supposed to have dropped, the estrogen will still be high. Will, will still be high. Oh. So the endometrium will be growing. And then you, you can come up with bleeding, spotting. Uh, that is one of them. And of course, they talk of smoking, everything is smoking. If you smoke, you could end drinking. up with a, a cancer anyway. Uh, then uh, a woman who is on post-menopausal estrogen replacement therapy, therapy. you know, they, they tend to, to have sometimes higher, higher amount of estrogen in their blood, especially those who are not checked, and they bleed. So they use those uh, 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 therapy because they're unable to manage the so, symptoms of menopause? Yes. Okay. And, and, and they overmanage over it, mm -hmm. or they yeah. have high estrogen, high estrogen. and the yeah. endometrium starts growing, mm -hmm. and it spots. Start spotting. So that's another one. Mm. Um, of course, a woman who doesn't do exercise would definitely have like high weight. Like a sedentary lifestyle? Sedentary lifestyle, yes. Okay. They definitely would have weight. So you have mentioned obesity as a risk factor? Yeah. And uh, somebody who doesn't exercise regularly as yeah. another risk factor? Yeah. And of course, Hormonal challenges mm -hmm. as also risk factors. Yeah. When we come back from our break, we'll talk more about the causes 
Okay? We'll be back after the short break. Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you are on to your regular program, The Physicians, where your health is our business. We'll be discussing postmenopausal bleeding in women. And the prof here, Professor Sir Anthony Akinloye Bamiboye, has been doing justice to this topic. He's told us a whole lot about the risk factors, and he did mention obesity as a risk factor, and of course, lack of exercise as another risk factor. So, prof, you just said those things before we went on break. What are the other risk factors that can be responsible or accountable for postmenopausal bleeding? Um, there are not a lot of risk factors, really. Uh, but if you know the principle of estrogen, then anything that will raise your estrogen level after menopause will be a risk factor. So um, those women who are exposed to estrogen from whatever source, would definitely have a, a higher risk factor. So okay. at this point, will you say somebody who has had like a um, partial or total hysterectomy that wasn't, that did, you know, maybe the person in their 30s, yeah. you know, because of some issues or whatever, had, you know, the uterus, everything removed, and now maybe kind of going through hormonal replacement therapy, is that kind of a case or an individual at risk Postmenopausal bleeding. Um, you know, passes through of hysterectomy. If you you have ever had hysterectomy, the the causes of uh, postmenopausal bleeding will be reduced. Okay. Uh, because we estrogen. you have a uh, estrogen, estrogen factor yeah. acting on the endometrium, but in this case we have estrogen factor acting on the uh, vagina. Um, and the vault of the vagina, okay? okay? And uh, when you have the uh, vagina still intact, and you have atrophy of the vagina, now low estrogen level, just see the way yeah, it goes. Yeah. Low estrogen Certainly. will make you yeah. to have vagina atrophy, okay. and atrophy of the vagina will stimulate you to bleed. True. Yeah, true. So because you can easily get infected, infected. okay? Whereas again, if you have too much estrogen, you're going to bleed. So either way, you, you so bleed. everything should be in moderation. Should, exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm. So you talk about the causes. You have to talk about the risk factors, even uh, the estrogen being a major uh, uh, challenge there. We've had all these on. I'm sure the viewers are there want to ask. So how can this be managed? But before the management, how do you do, make a diagnosis? Apart from just the bleeding that you, the patient will come out with, are there other investigations that need to be done? Thank you very much, uh, doctor, or doctor, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Um, when a woman bleeds and comes to my cl clinic, for example, to me it's a serious thing. As a trained gynecology oncologist, you know, because I did uh, a lot of oncology work, a woman who bleeds, I take it serious. serious. And uh, for the benefit of those at home, they must note that um, if you bleed and you complain to a doctor, the doctor must see you within two weeks. Anything after two weeks, your health is at risk. Hmm. So, uh, for example, the, um, the medical system, the health insurance system, whereby you book for a patient and wait for two months, months yeah. that does not happen in endometrial bleed or vaginal bleed, not at all. So even in the UK, with the NHIS, NHIS, where people are used to booking for eight months, hmm. when you have bleeding from the vagina, they extend your, your seeing the doctor. That's doctors. an emergency. So it's because it's a mini emergency. Hmm. So what happens when they come, of course, we examine the vagina, we use a speculum that's a valve that we put in to see the mouth of the womb, the service, to see whether we can see anything like a polyps or vaginal atrophy or cervical uh, polyps or atrophy of the service as well. So when we see that, then we can know that this is caused by so so and so. So, so there's no need, need to probably panic. Then again, we, if we are still not sure, right into the endometrium, the lining of the inside of the womb. There we put something we, we, we call a stereoscopy, office, it's a, it's a, in your 
office. When you do that, um, we take sample, we take a biopsy of the endometrium, we send it to the lab laboratory to, to check whether there is anything, any, anything that is inimical yeah. into the womb. So, of course, we will have done a pap smear first to, to see whether there's a, any lesion of the, of the service. So it's those early of tests that we, we, we do before we make a, a diagnosis. We need blood tests. We need to, to do things like um, uh, fasting blood sugar or red blood sugar okay. to okay. ensure that there's no diabetes, yeah, insulin like level, and so on and so, and so forth. And um, a diagnosis of endometrial biopsy, I mean, of endometrial cancer or hyperplasia or disease is made based on the biopsy that we have done. Okay. Uh, and the treatment? You know, we, uh, uh, when, when we manage uh, such cases, we actually treat based on our finding when we examine. If it's due to atrophy, you know you have to replace estrogen. You give the, the woman estrogen, it could be through a pastry, it could be through a cream, if a, if a cream, it could be through IUCD, it could be through injection or oral or implant. There are quite a, quite a lot of estrogen that we can replace to make sure that the service is, uh, you know, is, is normal. And of course, uh, if it's due to polyps, polyps is, is a growth, a very a, a tiny growth which you can find at the mouth of the womb. You just take a forceps, you, you twist that polyp in the theater, you know, because it could bleed at times. So we, we, we twist it and then we, we send it for test to, to, to ensure that it's not a, a cancer. We cannot, of course, if you do uh, endometrial biopsy, it could be a benign, if, if, in fact, most times it's benign, benign, but it could be a, mal a malignant condition. If it's benign, it could be apoplasia, or, or, and if it's apoplasia, if there are two types of apoplasia. One is a typical apoplasia, not a normal one. The other one is a, a normal apoplasia. If it's a typical apoplasia, then it could turn into, into cancer any time. Cool. Okay, but if it's a, a normal one, it, it means it will not. You can manage with IUCD, with progesterone, uh, in, the, in the IUCD, the, what they call Mirena. Everybody knows that, about it. You put it in, then you can have atrophy because you have put progesterone inside. So, uh, so you actually, actually manage according to what you find. If it's, if it's a cancer, the endometrial cancer, endo endometrial cancer is one of the best cancers, best, I'm, I'm, I'm saying now, not that it's best, but yeah. it's the it best one that I have, yeah. because it gives you symptoms very early, okay. the endometrial cancer, which is post menopausal bleeding. When it gives you symptoms early, then it means you see for help early. early yeah. Yeah. So when you see for help early, it means your uh, uh, outcome, yeah. the outcome will be better, better. you see? So if it's one, of the, it's, one the, it's one of the cancers that you have that you rush to the doctor. Oh, I'm bleeding. Uh, I'm 60 years old. Let me go and check immediately, and then you can do it early. Okay. Uh, well, time is not always our friend, doctor. I have to just say thank you very much for coming on our program, the physicians, and then we really appreciate your wealth of knowledge, what you have uh, impacted on our viewers out there. So have you asked, as I'm sure you've heard it all from the professor himself, he talked about postmenopausal bleeding. It's not as if we have to wait to become menopausal before you avail yourself for a medical check. Bleeding on its own is very dangerous. So at any time when you notice that you are spotting or you are bleeding, just seek help. Be it premenopausal, menopausal, or postmenopausal, so that it can be nipped in the bud. He also talked about the different causes, the risk factors. He made mention of obesity as one of them. The only ones that you can actually prevent or manage is obesity at least. If you are obese, it is encouraged, it is advisable that you try as much as possible to manage your diet. Know what you're taking. Your lifestyle is very, very important. Try as much as possible to exercise. On this note, I have to call it a day. As usual, my name is Dr. Martina Agberi. Thank you very much, Pop. It's always a brilliant section with you and to our viewers out there if you didn't take anything away from this session today now you know there's what we call postmenopausal bleeding and one in ten women do experience this obesity lack of exercise are some of the risk factors that you can experience but what is the good news about it it makes you seek help on time because bleeding is something that nobody wants to encounter and so usually the outcome is always very good 
we the physicians we are always very grateful for your time you take out to watch us so please do share news with friends family where wishes to follow us on all our various social media platforms youtube instagram twitter facebook and of course our website my name remain dr memona yusuf kadri until next time stay blessed I'm uh, Dr. Festus Odwayo Ashoba. Uh, I'm, I'm an ophthalmologist. I work for Lad Kemai Hospital at Eric Manuel and Surule Lagos. And I'm saying that the world is bright, so save your sight. And keep healthy all the time. And keep watching the physicians and stay blessed see you again sometime <laughs>